Hey guys, welcome back to the third and final part of our Tom Nook tutorial where we go over texturing, rigging, and lighting. Let's start by preparing our objects for texturing. The process of UV unwrapping is basically attempting to take our three-dimensional model and cut it up into pieces that can be laid out flat for texturing. Alt select the middle loop of his head and hit Ctrl E to open the edge menu, then find mark seam. I'm going to separate the ear from the head and cut the ear up into multiple pieces. Then I'll probably separate the nose and pop into wireframe so I can see my reference and confirm that the nose gradient is completely contained within these spaces. And lastly, I'll cut down the side of his head. You can have as many or as few seams as you like. I'm going to separate the arm into its own object by selecting the arm mesh, hitting P, and selecting by selection. In object mode, I'll select this object and rename it to arms. And might as well name the pants as well. I'm going to treat his arm like cylinders, since they pretty much are, so two seams will work just fine. I'll give the tail a middle seam, which I don't think it'll need, but it's not going to hurt anything. I'm going to treat the foot like a cylinder as well. So now in object mode, shift select your foot, tail, arm, and head object, tab into edit mode, and select everything. U brings up the unwrapping menu, but first, let's take a look at our current UV projection in this bottom tab. Click the drop-down menu in the upper left-hand corner of this tab and select UV Editor. Now, while hovering over our main tab, hit U to bring up the unwrapping menu. Blender has a bunch of unwrapping options, but we're just going to use Unwrap at this point. Now we have all of our shapes laid out flat. Let's click the View tab on the side. And under Overlays, check the box that says Stretching. Blue is good, red is bad. Most of our faces are dark blue, so I say we did a pretty decent job. Click the two arrows over here to keep the UV and Edit Mode selection in sync. This lets me keep track of what faces I'm currently positioning the UV for. At this point, you can move these islands around and scale them to your liking. I want to use a gradient texture in as many places as I can. So I am going to prepare my model for that now. While in face mode, I select a face from the front and back of the arm. Hitting Ctrl L will select the part of the mesh contained by these two UV islands. I'm going into front orthographic view and unwrapping my arms again. But this time I'm going to select project from view. It will replace my arms UV, but it should be selected. So mouse over the UV editor and hit G to grab and find it. I'm going to do the same with the nose, but from the right. Hit U and select Project from View. Same with the tail, select it all, hit Side View, hit U, Project from View. You'll notice I'm stacking all of these newly unwrapped objects. They're all going to be using the same gradient as a texture, so I put them on top of each other with the sides that'll be dark brown facing the same direction. And I'll fine tune it later on. And again with the feet. I'm just going to select the entirety of the foot and project from view in the front view. I want the front of the face to have the most detail since I'll be drawing on it, so I'll make it significantly bigger than the rest of the islands. I'll quickly show you how to draw a gradient texture. In this bottom tab, select Image Editor. Under the Image, select New. This texture can be pretty small, 64 by 128 should be enough. So, in this upper tab, switch to Texture Paint Mode, select the Fill Tool. Click the Tool Settings tab under Color Picker, change to Gradient. I tried a lot of colors, but the ones I finally found to be the best were this for the light brown and this for the dark brown. Write these colors down somewhere in case you lose them. At this point, you can save this texture under the Image menu and edit it externally. Paint it in Blender or cheat like me and use a texture you already have. I'll put a link to this texture in the description. Time to create a separate material for his face. In edit mode, let's select a face in the front part of his head. Go over to the Material tab, click the plus icon to add a new material slot. Click the drop down arrow here and select Skin again. Then click this button called Add New Material to duplicate the skin material. I'll name this new material face. Don't worry about this texture here, you won't have it yet. Select the entirety of his face UV island with Ctrl L and assign the material to his face. 
If you haven't done so already, with the skin texture selected, in the shader editor hit Shift A to add an image texture. Click open and navigate to the texture. Connect the color output to the base color input of the skin material. Now let's switch over to the UV editor. I'm just going to temporarily move the face and back of the head away. Now, while in material view, position the islands in the UV editor so that they look nice on the model. The nose is a little more tricky. I scaled it and did some fine tuning to get the gradient to sit on his nose more how I wanted it to. Proportional editing also works in the UV editor. I think this looks pretty good, so let's move on to the shirt. I don't want the shirt texture to be mirrored, so I'm going to apply my mirrored modifier. If you watch the time lapse of this footage, you probably notice I textured his shirt twice and I ended up not liking this middle seam, so I went back and removed it. I'm going to edit the footage so you only have to texture his shirt once. I'm going to add seams to the shirt. Don't forget to do the same on the other side since we no longer have a mirror modifier. And now, I want one seam running up the side of the main part of the shirt. I'll just alt select some semi edge loops and then circle deselect anything I don't want by holding shift while circle selecting. And then mark these seams. Be careful to get the edges that you want. Now unwrap the pants. Here's my first shirt set up and setting up the material. Now I'm just moving the face islands back onto the screen. This is the part where I cut out the first shirt texturing. I don't like how the ears bleed onto his head currently, so in the bottom tab, go to the image editor and switch from view to paint mode. In the middle drop down, select the ear gradient slash ear texture. Change the main windows mode into texture paint. Use the brush tool to paint out this bleed over. Make sure you are using the base Tom Nook color to paint over with. Hitting F and dragging the mouse allows you to change the size of your brush. We can either paint directly onto the model or onto the texture. So I'm going to paint out this bottom half of the ear. Looks alright to me. Let's paint his face now. Select his face island. Make sure in the material tab you are editing the face material. Add a texture node. Connect the color output and inputs. Click new. Name this whatever you want it to be. In my case, I named it face and hit OK. Now in the image editor, open up this new texture. Make sure the upper pane is in the texture paint mode as well. Select the fill tool and under the tool properties, make sure you have the right color selected. I don't have the right colors, so I'm going to paint in a swatch for myself and sample it with the fill tool. Now, use the fill tool to completely fill in this texture, and then brush out anything that didn't fill. Using the darker brown color, I went into wireframe view so that I could see my reference, and started outlining his face. Make sure the dark brown color is in the main slot. You can switch the foreground and background colors by hitting these two circle arrows. And just color in the dark brown shape. You can switch back and forth, fine tuning until you're happy with this. I should also remind you that hitting F and dragging your mouse allows you to change the size of the brush. Alright, not too bad. Now let's fix what I didn't like about the shirt. So, alt select this middle seam, control E and hit clear seam. I'm also going to move the side seam. Clear seams and mark seams to add and remove respectively. So now, select all and hit U to unwrap. Go into UV view, and the stretching looks alright. I unwrap the collar, it's probably unnecessary to texture the collar, but I do have a cool thing to show you. I select all the front faces on the collar, and under the select menu, choose select loops, and select boundary loops. Then, control E to mark seam. This is a useful way to select boundary edges. So now, I just unwrap this because I don't care about the other faces. I go into paint mode and open the texture that I previously made for the shirt. Put the main tab into texture paint mode. I select white as my main color, and pretend this part never happened. 
I'm going to paint his chest to his skin color. And then in object mode, select the collar and move all of the islands out of the way of the shirt UVs. So now you paint him. I use the reference, but you can do whatever you want. Make him purple. Blender does have a very good texture painter built in, but I'm bad at it. So I save these textures as guides and fix them externally with Adobe Photoshop, but you can use whatever image editor you want to. Also, paint in the shorts. I messed around with the materials for a while, but these are what I ultimately came up with. Also, at this point, go into object mode, select everything, and hit Ctrl A. Select apply scale so that our procedural textures have a consistent sizing. Now to start the rigging. Let's add an armature to our model. In object mode, shift A to add an armature. Position it as you do any other object, although it has handles at each end that can move individually. Under the green running man tab, select viewport display and check in front. This will make your armature show through all the objects no matter what view you're in. With the bottom of the bone selected, hit E to extrude another bone out. Extrude another bone down to the foot, open your search menu with F3, and hit subdivide to cut it in half. Select the top of the original bone and extrude this one up to the neck, and then another one over to the shoulder. The Animal Crossing characters don't have much mobility, so the positioning of the bones isn't as important. Extrude out a bone to the tip of his hand, subdivide the bone to give him an elbow, and extrude a bone up into his head. Let's give him a couple tail bones. His tail doesn't have much geometry, so you won't be able to bend it as much before it deforms horribly. If you want an expressive tail, add more bones and then more edge loops. I'm going to select his arm and leg bones and change my transform point to my 3D cursor. Make sure your cursor is at the origin. Hit Shift S and Cursor to Origin if it isn't. Now, with these bones selected, hit Shift D to duplicate, scale on the X axis by negative 1. I then select all and under the Armature tab, go down to Bone Roll and recalculate roll by using Global Positive Y Axis. This rig is so simple, I don't think you will need to worry too much about the bone rolls anyway. I'm going to add some last minute edge loops to the arm where his elbow will bend. And I guess one more for the knees. At this point, I'm committing to how I have everything unwrapped and textured, and I'm going to go through and apply all my mirror modifiers. Now in object mode, select all the Tom Nook objects, and lastly, shift select the armature. Your armature should be bright orange, and the other objects will be a darker orange slash red. Now hit Ctrl P to parent these objects to the armature, and select Automatic Weights. With the armature selected, drop down into Pose Mode. Now, as you rotate bones, you should see the model also moving with it. Let's customize some of the bone weights. This will change how much control each bone has over each vertex. In object mode, select the rig, and then the head object. Change into Weight Paint Edit Mode. Select the head bone. Tab into Edit Mode and select all the vertices. Go into Object Data tab, which looks like a green triangle. Make sure the weight bar is set to 1, and click Assign. Tab back into Weight Paint mode, and you'll see the head bone now has a weight of 1 assigned to the entire object. I'm going to set the weight to zero now and select the arm bones individually and make sure they have no control over the head position by selecting them individually and assigning a weight of zero to them. All right, so the head bone now solely controls the head object's position. Now in object mode, select the armature and the shirt object. Go back into weight paint mode and select the arm bone. I don't want the arm bones to deform his body too much. So, in the Tool tab, I'm going to select Subtract and pull down the Strength a bit. With the Draw tool selected, you can hit F to change the size, and I'm going to paint out some of the bone weight on the chest. I'm going to do this on both sides. I don't like how the collar moves, so again in Object Mode, select the Armature and the Collar object, go back into Weight Paint, and remove the arm bone's control over the collar. Everything seems to bend alright. The tail kinda sucks, but it's alright. 
I'm also going to make the head bone not have any control over the collar object. And congratulations, you have a complete character that you can pose and animate. Now for the lighting and rendering setup. Here's my GPU and CPU, which aren't amazing. My only light is the light we made earlier. Under the Material tab, select where it says Object and switch to World. I've set up my scene to have a hidden HDRI texture doing all the fancy lighting, and then a flat matte color for the camera, using a light path node. This HDRI texture comes from an amazing site called HDRI Haven, link in the description. All of their HDRIs are completely free, which by my computer specs you can probably tell I appreciate. This is what the HDRI looks like in our scene. They're pretty high quality scene lighting. Here's my render settings, all pretty much default. If you have fireflies in your scene, you can increase the samples or change the compositor. Click use nodes and add this denoiser node. You can find it by hitting shift A and going down to filter. That's how I made this scene. With basic skills, you can make pretty much anything. The sky's the limit. I hope these videos helped you in some way. It's very exciting to create things and I, I love it. Thank you for watching. Okay, love you, bye.